Islam, from the very beginning, has said that it is the last divine message to mankind, the final manifestation of the revelation of the prophethood, and the completion of the previous Abrahamic religions. The Muslims be believe that the Prophet of Islam is the last messenger of God, and that in the Quran this was revealed as so. Prophet Jesus gave uh, good tidings to another prophet that would be coming after him, and this was referring to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is mentioned in John 16, verses 12 and 13. And this is in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in the Torah, Prophet Moses tells us about the coming of Prophet Muhammad as well. And he is known as Ahmad. And here you can see the family tree of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It includes all the Prophets that came before him, including Ulil Azim, which are the five uh, main Prophets that endured a lot in their lifetimes. And they include Nabi Nuh, Nabi Ibrahim, Nabi Musa, Nabi Isa, and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Jawharatu al-taqdisi wal-wilai Anzalaha Allahu ila al-kisai Amsatu akhari min al-samai Anzalaha Allahu ila al-kisai Near the end of the Prophet's life, when his message from God has been approaching its end, he took part in the very last pilgrimage to Mecca. And with more than a hundred thousand Muslims present, the Prophet said, إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمْ الثَّقَلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَعِتْرَةِ أَهْلَ بَيْتِ مَا أَنْ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا لَنْ تَظَلُّوا بَعْدِ أَبَدًا فَإِنَّهُمَا لَنْ يَفْتَرِغَا حَتَّى يَرِدَ عَلَيَّ الْحَوْضِ And so here, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sets equal the Qur'an and his family, peace be upon them. 
And in the, the next scene, we also have Hadith al Kisa. Hadith al Thaqalain emphasizes the importance of the family of the Prophet. But who is he referring to? And it is in Hadith al Kisa that the Prophet tells us that his family consists of Fatima, wa Abiha, wa Ba'diha, wa Biniha. And here he says, It is well known that the Prophet was born in the month of Rabi al Awal, in the year of the elephant, in 570 after the birth of Jesus. The year of the elephant is named such because it was the year that the Yemeni ruler sent troops of elephants from Yemen to Mecca. And so from a very young age, the Prophet was taken away from his birthplace of Mecca and placed in the care of a wet nurse in the desert. And so here you have the manger in which the Prophet was born, around him his mother and her servants. The father of the Prophet, peace be upon him, died only months before his birth on a trip from Mecca to Medina. O mountains of Mecca, how was the dawn On the day that my Prophet Muhammad was born How did it feel knowing he was to be The last and most beloved of all Rasul of Allah Nabi of Allah Prophet Muhammad's mother Amina bin Twahab did what most Arabs would do at the time. And so she sent Prophet Muhammad to live in the desert amongst the Arabs. In Mecca, many people would come from, differ from different parts of the world. And so the language that the Prophet would speak would not be the true Arabic. The mother of the Prophet sent him to live with the people of Bani Asad so that he may preserve his language and so that he may say that he is indeed an Arab. And so here you can see the animals that would always surround the Prophet, peace be upon him, no matter where he went. The first lady that breastfed him, her name was Thuwayba, and she was the servant of his uncle, Abu Lahab. And the second lady, her name was Halima Sa'diyya, who was pious and a God-fearing lady. And she used to say that she saw vast riches and goodness affect her life once she started to suckle the Prophet. After the death of his mother, Amin ibn Tuhab, the Prophet went to go live with his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. And only years later, Abdul Muttalib too fell in illness and died. And so to take care of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abdul Muttalib designated his son, Abu Talib, who also had three other sons. And it is here that you see the Prophet, peace be upon him, now playing with the children of Abu Talib, and one of them including Imam Ali salam. And so it was the Prophet himself who raised Imam Ali to be the Rashid, the warrior, the great personality that we know him to be. One of the richest merchants of Mecca was a woman by the name of Khadija bint Khuwaylid of Bani Asad. She fed and clothed the poor and she assisted her relatives financially while neither believing in nor worshipping the idols who were common in pre-Islamic Arabian culture. Khadija would often employ others to travel and trade on her behalf. And in the year 595, Khadija needed someone to go to Syria and she was recommended the Prophet, peace be upon him. And so the Prophet, with the title of as sadiqul Amin, meaning the reliable or the trustworthy, was given this responsibility. And Khadija bint Khwailid noticed that the Prophet was true to his word and that she received more money in this transaction than she initially invested. And she fell in love with the Prophet, peace be upon him. And so she sent her servant to go and get the Prophet, peace be upon him, so that they may marry. 
at this point in time, it is said that Khadija was approximately 40 years of age, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, was only 26. And because of the relationship of Abu Talib with the Prophet, peace be upon him, it was Abu Talib that accompanied the Prophet with the intention of marrying Khadija bin Khwailid. And here we see the marriage of the first wife of the Prophet. With submission, faith and patience, you conveyed the noble message, brought the light through your guidance. Peace be upon you, my beloved, Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad, Ya Nabi. One of the biggest wonders of the world in today's society is the black stone located in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. It is attached to the eastern side of the Kaaba, which is at the center of the Islamic faith. The black stone was sent down by God to Prophet Adam and it was preserved and placed into the Kaaba when it was built. In the year 605, the Kaaba was reconstructed and because of this, the black stone was removed from its original position. The clan leaders of Quraysh assembled and they each wanted to put the black stone in its original position because this was a sign of honor. And none of them could agree and it got to the point where they were ready to fight and one of them said that the next person to walk in would choose amongst us. And this person was none other than the Prophet, peace be upon him. So to decide, the Prophet removed his cloak, gave each corner to one of the four leaders. They each raised the cloak which had the black stone in it. And the Prophet restored the black stone to its original position. And in this scene, we see the wisdom of the Prophet. Because it was to the point where there was about to be bloodshed and the Prophet restored balance and peace to the Muslim nation before his prophethood. The Prophet refused to worship idols as was common practice amongst the Arabs at the time. Occasionally, he would make spiritual retreats to the cave of Hira, outside of Mecca, in which he prayed and spoke secretly with God. It is said occasionally that Ali ibn Abi Talib, his cousin, would accompany him, as well as his wife Khadija. When the Prophet was 40, he was in the cave of Hira and received his first revelation from God through the archangel Gabriel. It was here that the Archangel Gabriel said unto the Prophet, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram. And he continued and continued. This was the beginning of his mission to spread the new religion of Islam. And it was this day that the Prophet went to his cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib and his wife Khadija and he told them of what had happened and they immediately converted to Islam and became one of the first Muslims of the faith. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد صدق الله العلي العظيم أبو لهب was one of the most prominent leaders in the Quraysh tribe of Bani Hashim. He was the uncle of the Prophet peace be upon him and thus the brother of the Prophet's father. Abu Lahab had initially a strong relationship with the Prophet and he loved him. But it was when that the Prophet began his prophethood and began spreading Islam that Abu Lahab began hating the Prophet. And it was here Abu Lahab would go to the guardian of the Prophet, his uncle, 
Abu Talib and ask that the Prophet stop his spread of Islam and that Abu Lahab would offer the Prophet anything so that he may stop. But the Prophet refused. And so we see his wife, Umm Jamil, throwing the hatab, the sticks, in front of the Prophet so that he may no longer walk and she would burn the sticks, blocking his path. Abu Lahab would then proceed by throwing rocks in the way of the Prophet so as to harm him. Regardless of what happened to him, the Prophet remained faithful and he treated his family, his uncle, with respect, regardless of how they treated him in return. إلهي ومجيري من بسر الغيب على As the Prophet was spreading the message of Islam, he was met with severe hostility from those who would firmly reject his faith. But despite the hardships he faced, the Prophet was persistent. When the people of Mecca would witness the miracles of the Prophet, they would claim that he was a madman or a magician. And here we see the story of one of the neighbors of the Prophet, who was a non-believer. Every day when the Prophet would leave his house, this non-believer would approach the Prophet from his rooftop and throw garbage in the path of the Prophet. And he would do so every day. But the Prophet would not retaliate and harm this person. One day, this person stopped throwing the trash. And the Prophet noticed, after a couple of days, he went to the house of this person and asked what had happened. And it is here that he learned that this person had fallen sick and was no longer able to climb the rooftop to throw trash in front of the Prophet. And so it is here that the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would heal this person from their sickness. And so you see how tolerant the Prophet is of those around him and how nice he was regardless of how the people around him were treated. And because of this, the person who had thrown the garbage became a Muslim. And so here we see the spread of Islam through nothing but peaceful means. As the message of Islam began to spread, more and more people converted to Islam. However, they, these people were often mistreated. And so here we have Bilal al-Habashi, who converted to Islam in its early stages. And he was a slave at the time. And so the person who would look after Bilal would often torture him. He would take a big smolding boulder, place it on Bilal, and in the heat of the desert, this would harm the skin of Bilal al-Habashi. But the Prophet learned of this and rescued Bilal al-Habashi. And Bilal later became the first mu'addin of the religion of Islam. And this position that Bilal had meant that he became the cultural figure, the symbol of Islam in doing the idhan every day, despite him being a black man and commonly a servant, a slave. And so here we see that Islam is not a racist religion. It spread peacefully despite the people who would harm the Muslims and the Prophet, peace be upon them. You're our Prophet, our beloved. Truly you are most just and kind. You're our Prophet, our beloved. When the leaders of Mecca would approach the Prophet, peace be upon him, he responded to them by saying, Ya Am, Wallahi la wadahu shamsa fi yamini, wal qamara fi yisari, ala an atruka hadha al amar, ma taraktahu hatta yudhiruhu allahu, aw ahla kadunih. When word of the Prophet's message had spread throughout Mecca, the Prophet was met with much hostility. 
And while many members of Quraysh rejected the Prophet's message, some accepted it, including the people of Bani Hashim. And these atheists, however, would approach the Prophet and they felt threatened by the message of Islam. They would go to the uncle of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Talib, and they would ask of him to go to the Prophet and to stop his message of Islam and to stop the spread of this message. And Abu Talib would go to the Prophet and take his opinion. And this is where the Prophet revealed to him that even if these people gave me the sun and the moon in my hands, I would not stop this message of Islam. Even though they were providing all the riches and all the gold that they had and offering it to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He declined in order to spread the message of Islam. You conveyed the noble message, brought the light through your guidance. Peace be upon you, my beloved. Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad, Ya Nabi, Salam alayka, Ya Rasul, Salam alayka, Ya Habib, Salam alayka, Salawa. On 27th Rajab, all Muslim believers celebrate the day of Isra'ul Mi'raj as Grand Eid. One day, the Prophet suddenly heard a voice. It was the voice of the Archangel Gabriel, peace be upon him, who said to him, This night you have to perform a very unique journey, and I have been ordered to remain with you. You will have to traverse to different parts of the world, mounted on an animal named al Buraq. Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him on his progency, began his historical night journey, along with his trusted protector of the revelation, Angel uh, Gabriel, peace be upon him. After some time, Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him, stopped the Holy Prophet وسلم, and said to perform prayer. Holy Prophet Muhammad dismounted from al Buraq and performed prayer. Gabriel, peace be upon him, said, Do you know where you just prayed? The Holy Prophet replied to him in negative. Gabriel said, In Taiba, Medina, the place where your travelers will go. The Prophet mounted al Buraq and continued his journey. The Holy Prophet وسلم, was stopped and told to perform prayer again in two more places. In the mountain of Sinai, the place where Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was born. Bethlehem, the place where Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was born. Then they really reached Batur al-Maqdis, which is located in today's Jerusalem and is known as Masjid al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, proceeded to tie the reins of al buraq to the same ring that the great prophets before him used to tie their animal to. After this, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, entered to pray. On to his second part of this journey, he proceeded from the spot to the skies, the heavens. Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then observed the stars and the systems of the world. He conversed with the souls of the previous prophets and also the angels of the heavens. Peace and blessing be upon them all. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw the centers of heaven and hell and became fully aware of the secrets of creation, the extent of the universe, and the signs of the omnipotent Allah. Then the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, continued his journey and re reached Sudrat al Muthanna. Beyond this point, nobody has access, including Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him. And then he f there he found it fully covered with splendor, magnificent and grandeur. And then he returned back the way he had traveled. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, first came to Batul al-Maqdis, then to Mecca. It was daybreak when he dismounted from al buraq Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny, related to the people. The word of his travels spread from mouth to mouth among the groups. The journey of the Prophet has been straightforwardly explained in Surat Al-Isra, also known as Bani Israel. With the mission, faith and patience, you conveyed the noble message, brought us light through your guidance. 
peace be upon you, my beloved. Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad, Ya Nabi, Salam alayka, Ya Rasul, Salam alayka, Ya Habib, Salam alayka, Salawatullah alayka. Islam in Ethiopia dates back to the year 615. During that year, the Prophet, peace be upon him, led a group of Muslims out of Mecca. And instead, they went to the kingdom of Habasha, which is in modern-day Ethiopia. And it is here that the Prophet knew that there would be a just king, a fair king, that ruled Ethiopia. And he showed fairness and justice to his people in Ethiopia. The Prophet describes this king as someone who does not do wrong and he does not wrong anyone. The Prophet asks of his followers to respect and protect the king and to live in peace with the native Christians. And the tribe of Quraysh attempted to bring the Prophet followers back to Arabia. They sent missionaries to do this, however the king of Habasha ignored their demands. Ethiopians were the single largest non-Arab ethnic group who were Muhammad's companions. Ethiopia was thus the earliest home outside of Arabia for the dispersal of the Islamic world faith. <laughs> The Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated from Mecca to Medina. And before doing this, it was known to be a major turning point in the history of Islam. In Mecca, when the people of Quraysh knew about this and his plans to emigrate, they were worried about the Prophet and that he would be welcomed in Medina. And they did not want this. They did not want Islam to spread. So they made a plan to kill the Prophet in his sleep. And so many people from each of the tribes came and decided to kill the Prophet, peace be upon him. And it is here that we see the ayah come down and it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa min al-nasi man yashri nafsahu ibtigha'a maradat allahi wallahu ra'ufun bil-ibad The migration or hijrah from Mecca to Medina was the first opportunity for the believers to escape from their opposition. On Allah's command, the Prophet migrated secretly while the leaders of the Quraysh were planning to assassinate him in the dark of the night. And so it is here that we reveal this new ayah and it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبَصِرُونَ In other words, the people that came to kill the Prophet, peace be upon him, were left sleeping in the night. And this allowed the Prophet to escape. And in the meantime, his cousin Imam Ali came in and took the place of the Prophet in his bed. And so when his enemies had rewoken, they approached the sleeping person and threw rocks at him. But the Imam Ali did not move. And it was here when they approached the sleeping body that they noticed that it was Imam Ali and not the Prophet. And they knew that they could not handle Imam Ali. And so they left, unable to harm the message of Islam and its spread around the world. Ghar al Thawr is a cave located about four kilometers from Mecca in the south side of the Grand Mosque. It is the cave the Holy Prophet took refuge on his way to the city and his journey in the migration. They entered from the west side of the cave and in the course of their presence in the cave, Quraysh came looking for them and stood at the entrance of the cave but could not find them. And here you see the spider webs woven at the entrance of the cave and a pigeon located at the base. 
And because of these two things, the people of Quraysh that came to chase the Prophet, peace be upon him, decided that it must not be possible that the Prophet be hidden in here. Otherwise, the pigeon would have flown away and the spider web would not be like this. And upon seeing this, they decided not to enter the cave. And the Prophet remained safely inside the cave until the people of Quraysh left him.